Welcome back, I hope, to Lockdown Embryology with me, Alice Roberts. This video is all about the development of the urinary system. So the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder and the urethra. This video really forms one of a pair with the video on reproductive organs because the urinary system and the reproductive system are very closely related to each other, of course, in, in terms of adult anatomy, but even more so in the embryo. There are a lot of embryonic structures which are essentially shared between the two systems. If we look at where the kidneys and the gonads develop in the embryo, for instance, they both come from intermediate mesoderm. That long strip of mesoderm which lies between the paraxial mesoderm medially, which forms the somites, and then the lateral plate mesoderm more laterally, which forms the lining of the body cavities. And so I'm going to start by backtracking to the fourth week of development as the embryo is starting to do its lateral folding. So remember, we're right back to the trilaminar germ disc with its ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm, and that is now rolling itself up into a tube, bringing ectoderm to cover the outside of the body, endoderm between the two, you've got various bits and pieces of mesoderm. I'm coloring in the ectoderm blue as always, so we've got the neural tube just there. Yellow for endoderm, forming the gut tube in continuity with the lining of the yolk sac and then orange for mesoderm. It's forming condensations deep within the body of this developing embryo, a condensation of mesoderm next to the midline, paraxial mesoderm, which forms the somite, which go on to produce dermis, muscle and bone, the lateral plate mesoderm, which ends up lining the body cavity, forming pleura, pericardium and peritoneum. And between the two, we've got this intermediate mesoderm. So it's intermediate just in terms of its position between that paraxial mesoderm and the lateral plate mesoderm. And this is the bit of mesoderm that we're going to be focusing on in this video and the next video as well. This mesoderm is condensing, but structures are starting to form within it as well. So I'm just going to do a close up of this area at the edge of the embryo where we've got the the cleft, which will eventually be trapped inside the body as the body cavity, lined with lateral plate mesoderm. There's the lateral plate mesoderm, I'm just colouring in there in orange. The lateral plate mesoderm we can divide into two layers, a somatic, sometimes called parietal layer, which is up against the ectoderm, and then a splanchnic or visceral layer, which is up against the endoderm. There's the paraxial mesoderm towards the midline of the embryo. And then just below it, we can see the intermediate mesoderm. The paraxial mesoderm is starting to thicken up and condense. So is the intermediate mesoderm. And it's forming tiny structures. So the cells are organizing themselves into a very definite shape. They're organizing themselves into little blind-ended tubes and these are nephric tubules. These little blind-ended tubes are opening into that cleft at the side of the embryo, which is going to end up being the intraembryonic cavity. They're also associating themselves with branches of the dorsal aorta, which are forming little capillary knots. So that is a glomerulus. So we've got a glomerulus and a nephric tubule. And if you know anything about adult kidney anatomy, this is all going to seem a bit familiar. What's odd about this though is that those nephric tubules are forming in the intermediate mesoderm all the way up and down inside this developing embryo. So let me just sketch this embryo at about five weeks of development now where it's curled around, it's got its gut tube now nicely on the inside and that sausage shape is the intermediate mesoderm. And some of that intermediate mesoderm is starting to form definite segments. We've got segments up in the head and neck region, which are called the pronephros. Then there's an unsegmented sausage of mesoderm called the mesonephros, and another down towards the tail end of the embryo called the metanephros. The pronephros is actually a very ephemeral structure. It appears and disappears, and, and actually by the fifth week of development, it's pretty much regressed out of existence. And this is one of those echoes of evolution because 
other animals do have kidney structures up in the head and neck, but we don't, so we lose our pronephros. The mesonephros has a duct which connects up with part of the cloaca, that lowest part of the gut tube, which is actually being separated off anteriorly and will eventually form the bladder. So that's where that tube is going to end up draining. And then there's a bud from that mesonephric duct which enters the metanephros. I'm just going to focus on that metanephros for a minute because this is what's going to form the definitive kidney. The ureteric bud which grew out from the mesonephric duct expands to form the renal pelvis. So this is a hollow structure inside this developing kidney. And then it starts to branch so that by seven weeks, we can see that it's branched to form the major calyces of the collecting system of the kidney. And by the time the baby's newborn, we've got collecting tubules, which have grown into the tissue of the kidney as well. Now, if I start to add some color just to differentiate between these structures a bit better, I'm going to use this purpley color for the metanephros. And I'm going to use a lovely green for that ureteric bud growing into the metanephros, branching into the calyces, and then eventually those collecting tubules. But what's happening at a microscopic level in that metanephros. Well, the collecting tubules are growing into the metanephric tissue, which is condensing around the collecting tubules. And those condensations of metanephric tissue are going to develop into little primitive nephrons. Even while they're still so small, they have this cup shape developing at one end, so a Bowman's capsule, which will become associated with that little knot of capillaries, a glomerulus. That nephron will grow and grow. Eventually, where the nephron touches the collecting tubule, that tissue will break down so the nephron can drain straight into the collecting tubule. And the nephron, of course, is going to grow and grow and become a lot more convoluted so that we end up with the structures that we recognise in an adult nephron. So we have a proximal convoluted tubule, a distal convoluted tubule, and a loop of Henle developing as well really just by lengthening of that original stumpy little nephron. That's how the microarchitecture of the kidneys develops. And we've set up then this filtration system where the blood is being filtered and urine is created and it gathers in the collecting tubules and then passes down the ureters into the bladder. So let's take a look at the development of the bladder in a little bit more detail. The bladder forms from the cloaca so the end of the gut tube, it's made of endoderm in other words. The end of the gut tube is divided into an anterior portion and a posterior portion. So there's a urorectal septum, a wedge of tissue that grows down and separates the urogenital sinus, which is the precursor of the bladder and urethra, anteriorly from the rectum posteriorly. And you can see there the mesonephric duct and the ureteric bud. And the mesonephric duct runs down and then empties into that urogenital sinus. The urogenital sinus has this very narrow tube leading off it, the allantois, which extends into the connecting stalk. And in egg-laying animals, the allantois is quite important as a reservoir for waste. It's not so important in us, of course, because we've got a placenta to take waste away from the embryo, the fetus. But the echo of the allantois is there in adult anatomy. The urachus is almost like a cord of fibrous material that stretches from the bladder up to the umbilicus on the inside of your anterior abdominal wall. So to begin with, the ureteric bud grows off that mesonephric duct, but the mesonephric duct tissue is gradually absorbed into the posterior wall of the bladder until the ureter ends up with a separate opening to the mesonephric duct. But in fact, the openings of those two are going to swap around as the kidney ascends. So the kidney starts in this very low down position, basically down in the pelvis of this embryo, and then ends up rising up on the posterior abdominal wall. So in adult anatomy, the middle of the kidneys lies level with the first lumbar vertebra, L1. 
really in terms of what happens in the embryo it's almost as though the embryo grows away from the kidney the kidney kind of stays where it is but the embryo grows downwards as it rises up on the posterior abdominal wall it will get more and more cranial branches coming off from the aorta to supply it and then the more caudal ones will disappear as the kidney is ascending sometimes you do get one of the caudal ones remaining though so you end up with a renal artery going in at the hilum of the kidney but another small artery supplying the inferior pole of the kidney which is quite important to look for during kidney transplant the kidney is actually functioning in utero from about the 12th week of development so it is filtering the blood it is producing urine that is passing down the ureter into the forming bladder and is actually passed out into the amniotic cavity. So fetal urine is contributing to amniotic fluid. It sounds disgusting, but of course, all of the waste from the fetus is being removed via the placenta. So this really is just a filtrate of the blood, which is contributing to amniotic fluid. As the kidney rises up, the relative positions of the mesonephric duct and the ureter switch around. So it's almost as though the ureter is pulling up on the posterior wall of the urogenital sinus and ends up emptying into the bladder itself whereas the mesonephric duct enters into the urogenital sinus at the junction of the bladder and the urethra just below. In the next video I'm going to look at what becomes of the mesonephros that's still there, the mesonephric duct is still there and in fact if we look carefully we can see that there's another block of tissue forming just medially to that mesonephros and that is the developing gonad. So we'll look more carefully at the mesonephros and that gonad in the next lockdown embryology video where I'll focus on reproductive systems. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Please like, please share, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching.